Our partners at Bet Online continue to be your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's Wimbledon Finals, Major League Baseball, all the latest fighting news, and this season's NFL. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today. Receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BLEAV to get the bonus and get into action. Bet online where the game starts. Hello, hello, hello. It's Private Talk Podcast with Alexis Texas, and we are back season five. And today, Private Talk, we have Jenna Star on the couch. Hello and Hi. welcome. <laughs> How are me. you? I'm good. You seem a little nervous. I am. Why are you nervous? <laughs> Talk to Miss Texas. We got to shake out the nerves. You I know? always get nervous before these. Why? You know, we're just two girlfriends. We're <laughs> talking. It's a private conversation. We're getting to know each other a little bit better. And by the end of this, it'll be like we're good friends. Yeah. I won't bite you too hard. <laughs> All right, Miss Ma'am. So what have you been up to since 2024 just started? We're only like at the end of February. Did you go attend AVN or have you been shooting content from the beginning of the year? <laughs> what have you been up to? I'm like, should I tell the truth about AVN or should I just? You should tell the truth. We had, I used to have it's this actually... button that said it. I want the truth. I wish I had it right now because yeah. I definitely want the truth. Tell this us the truth. It's a tea. really, really messed up story. I would love to hear it. Let's okay. spill it out here on Private Talk. So I went the first day. Okay. Now, mind you, I didn't want to go at all um, for my mental health's sake. Okay. Um, I'm here. Have you been before? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I went last year and that's why I was okay. like, I don't want to So you knew that I, there was too much for you kind of thing? Yeah, I just feel like after Christmas, you know, I'm big on my finances and business. So I just felt like after Christmas, Last time they just threw everything together and um, it doesn't really give you much time to like catch back Who's up they? on working, ABN, okay. the way they set it up. Okay. Then you have Exviz like right afterwards. So now you're taking up almost two weeks of my month and I'm very calculated okay. with my money. So that bothers me for one. Two, I don't like being around a lot of people um, and there's not always a very good energy around. Um, so that just kind of like gets to me um okay. i had like panic attacks last year it was overwhelming it was just a lot okay for me personally. did you have anybody to go to to kind of like help you out when you were struggling with that kind of stuff um not really okay. maybe it was just a few people that might have been close by but i think i'm a very reclusive like self i'm used to dealing with things on my own so okay. i kind of just you know go into it but no i don't know a lot of people i don't hang out with a lot of people um so okay not really so you kept it to yourself so this year you were asked to do it again and you were like uh, i don't really know but they would whoever is they or is your agent or who yeah i just you? feel like it's one of those things where it's like oh you're supposed to do this okay you know and i don't feel like it really does anything for so did you like, sign for a company did you sign for did you just go for yourself or how what did, did you end up going well, I, I did, but I didn't. I went uh, with my agent. So I showed up the first day, and I get really nervous, so then I'll drink a lot. And then, well, you know, that doesn't always end up very well. Because last year, I just got so nervous. I was, like, throwing up blood, like, the night before the actual, like, show. I was having, like, my chest pains were really bad. Heart's pounding. I couldn't sleep. So it's like, why put myself through all that? If it's that, do you like what makes you get to that point where you feel that much anxiety about just the show? Is it just being around the people? Social anxiety. The, okay. I have social, social I have like anxiety disorders. Okay. So I say that in plural. Um, I have social anxiety, I have PTSD. Um, so just being around so much going on just like startles me. It's a lot. Yeah. And you know, so this year, um, I went the first day and I'm not going to say who the girl is because I'm not going to give her the credit. And she's not really even in the actual pro industry. I'm not even sure why she was there. But anyways, um, I usually don't have much negative to say, but I think the situation was really messed up. And since Avian won't talk to me, I feel like opening up about it here maybe might make me feel better since nobody wants to talk to me about it. Um, so I went over to the bar and I was getting some drinks and there was this girl there and we had a short exchange of an argument. I don't know what she said to Avian, but they kicked me out. Okay. And that was very, very painful for the fact that I, I've been in the industry three years now. I think we've all put a lot of work in. It's not like, I'm like, oh my God, I've done so much. But I just felt like after everything, and this person's not even in the, in the pro, you took her word, whatever she said to you, I have no idea if they kicked her out as well. Um, 
It was a very short argument. I've never had a problem with anyone in the past. So I felt like after spending $500 on a dress, I never got to wear. It's hanging in my closet. All of the stuff I bought to sell, I really didn't want to go. I, I worked myself up for about three months to be able to do this. And then just to get thrown to the wayside by AVN, they wouldn't talk to me. I couldn't talk to them. They just said, nope, give me your, your badge, you're out. And I felt like, okay, so I've invested money to be here. This is a career. It's a business. And you're just going to treat me like that? Still, to this day, I've even, I like, you know, hey. So the show, the convention? The no, actual show, ABN. The awards. Or like the no, convention. No, like the convention The thing. convention thing. So then I couldn't go to the awards show. I couldn't Got do it. anything. I couldn't go to the parties that I bought dresses for. What was this argument about? It was just a do quick, like. Do you remember what it was because you said that you were yeah, drinking it was and just, was it something yeah, crazy yeah. or. Yeah, I just, you know, we just, like, for some reason she doesn't really like me for whatever reason. And I felt like. I've supported her in, you know, paying for like promos or going to her content events. And then after that, she's always giving me dirty looks. She's just being very rude. And she doesn't have a good rap with with anyone, mm -hmm. you know. And so I just was like, yeah, you're rude, you know. And then we just snapped back to each other real quick. And then she scurried off. And the next thing you know. So it was only verbal, no physical. Yeah, no so I could totally understand if it was this huge scene and people put their hands on each other. Yeah. yeah. But. Yeah. It was totally uncalled for. So was it security or was it actual ahead of AVN? The head, no, them? they went, the, my agent tried to speak to them and everything went through the whole thing. And your um, agent doesn't even know what was to Now, mind you, when I had to sit in a hotel room waiting to find out if I was even allowed to go back or not, nobody's texting me back. I've called several people. Nobody cares. Nobody's answering the phone. Everyone's worried about themselves, which is fine. I'm not entitled to anybody to care. But the fact of the matter is, is you're just feeling so alone in that moment. Why are we even here right now? Yeah. You know? That's unfortunate. And I'm sorry that you had to go through that and that your experiences ha has been bad with Avionics first time being like just the anxiety part and then like, mm -hmm. you know, getting yourself to where you could finally go. And then it didn't end up because of somebody's whatever was told. And it's not fair in the sense of the fact that you weren't given a chance to even rebuttal to whatever Nothing. was said. Not even and, my side. You know what I mean? And that is the kind of misfortunate part. And that's what's kind of, where it's kind of, I don't under get that part of whatever. Again, if it wasn't physical and it was only verbal, so it's misfortunate. But at the end of the day, you don't need them. You know no, what I mean? And it's unfortunate. And obviously, you went through the proper channels. You didn't do anything, whatever. But if you feel a certain way, you're entitled to feel that way. You do put money out and doing things. You, it is a company and a business that you feel like you should be protected to because you are there to doing stuff, work for that business. So, you know, it's not, you know, bad to feel the way that you feel. And it's, you know, it sucks that nobody heard you. And, you know, hopefully it gets rectified to a situation that you could probably come to an agreement of some sorts that makes whatever happened better. And I, you can't take yeah. it back because obviously it happened. You didn't get to go to the awards. And that's the unfortunate part. And, you know, things are very chaotic, which, again, doesn't make things right. If people didn't get back to you soon enough because of the severity of what it was, who knows? You know what I mean? But it's unfortunate. So I'm sorry that you had to go through that. But your feelings do matter and you do are a part of the business and you should be treated equally just like everybody else. And, you know, your opinions and your thoughts do better. So just know that. Because it was like, it was really But that's the thing is, like, that. sometimes things, I think sometimes, and depending on who, what the things, situations are, is things can become catty. Things can be whatever. And that's not really fair if that's just what it was and it wasn't something extreme. Right. Um, you know what I mean? Especially, like, if it was, and why weren't the cops involved? It's Vegas. Somebody's all, you know what I mean? It was situation, you know what I mean? So... It could have been all different. I wasn't kicked ways. out of the hotel, which was also strange. Yeah. It was AVN. And so, yeah, I just felt like after everything that I've put in and all the good that I've done and the fact that I was nominated last year, um, you know, with x and AVN, and it's like I've never had a problem with anyone on set. I don't yeah. think I have a bad rap, and you know, or whatever. So I just kind of felt like it was... It was just the end of the day, we're all human. And if something is, is that if it wasn't something that severe, then you should have been like kicked out of, you know, something completely as a convention as a whole. Right. Um, you know, so it's, again, unfortunate, but it's also in this day and age of your content provider or creator and you don't have to go to AVN. You don't have to go to Xbiz. You don't have to be a part of those things and you'll still make the money that you're doing. Is it good to do those things? Yes. But if you're having problems with those things, you could do it your own way and you know or talk 
what how you're speaking to me you're talking to you know like an adult you're standing up for yourself you didn't do anything wrong and go see them to in their offices go and speak for yourself and again not that that's going to change what happened because you can't go back in time but you could at least stand up for yourself and make it right for you you know so i would say don't necessarily exactly how you said it to me is the same conversation you know what i mean then maybe at least be like i don't even know what was said and you know that's the starting point so i think that you know you're allowed to know why especially if it's yeah. something to be like where you're kicked out of an entire an event yeah yeah their words were i was intimidating you're intimidating to me well i get that all the time <laughs> I, have, I have a really great I'm, resting bitch face i've had my mother a bit telling that i was like you know, sometimes it's just my look. Just I'm not mad. I'm just have a lot not to yeah. say. <laughs> exactly. Well, let, now that we got that off our chest, yeah. we feel better. Do we want it? Let's cheer. <laughs> our happy dads. Thank you. That's for sure. Welcome yeah. to Private Talk. I always make jokes. You say that I'm Dr. Texas. I don't have the I PhD, but you know, I like to, I know all the good things. I have a lot of personal experience. So, I'm, it's a safe space to say whatever you want. And uh, yeah, we can navigate through that. We love so that. what do you have coming forward in 2024? Do you have anything that maybe some collabs that you're like looking forward to doing? Maybe some companies that you haven't worked for that you want to? Do you have like a vision board for 2024? I'm trying to make one. I'm trying to be better about that. Like okay. having lists and like, you know, I just like come up with stuff and then try to do it. So I'm trying to be more organized. Um, there's actually quite a few companies I haven't worked for. So I think that's a big, you know, goal of mine. Um, I want to start doing anal. Um, so I'm working towards that. Um, just kind of like putting it out there and seeing what happens, trying okay. to grow up, you know? Okay. So, so let's, let's fast, let's go, re- let's press rewind. Let's do, how did we get to being Jenna Star right here? You said you're from California. Mm-hmm. You were you doing? Did you just only do F before? Did you? How did you start doing mainstream porn to get to you to private talk right now? Um. Well, long journey. Um. I think when I was about 26, when I first moved to Texas, um, I started trying to figure out how to escort. Okay. And I had no one to talk to. Um, I had no one to ask. Uh, I had a few friends that were. So why go to Texas to escort? I didn't. Oh, so why did you go to Texas for a boy? <laughs> no, I was actually trying to get away from my ex-husband. Okay. <laughs> okay. I had a divorce. Um, so you just wanted a new life, new situation. So you go to Texas. Um, I actually wanted to get out of California. Um, since I was born and raised, I wanted to have my own business, which I did start. As soon as I moved there, um, started doing really well. What was your business? Um, Microblading, uh, brows and lashes, spray tans. I did like baby stuff. So I had a a salon studio for five years there that I started when I moved there. So that's originally like was the whole thing. Now there was the personal like deep down inside of me, like towards the half to the end of my relationship. This is my second marriage. I have two teenagers. You know, at at this point, I'm thinking like, I don't know what I'm doing here, trying to make marriage work, or keep trying to make things that you know work with people and stuff. And it always seems like I'm just solicited all the time, and then dudes just want to have sex with me all the time. And so I was just like, you know what, if this doesn't work out, like I'm just gonna be like, oh, okay. I'm gonna make money because I don't want to be an old lady and be like, <laughs> okay, why didn't you take advantage of this? So. Um, I started trying to date. It was about a year after, um, I left my ex. I started trying to date and it was just like date after date, like regular dating was just the same thing, different people, you know? So then I was like, well, it still wasn't filling the void. No, it was just like, this isn't working okay. at all. So then I was like, okay, well, um, I think I should start getting paid to do this. So I got to figure out how to turn these dates into money. Okay. Um, and that's what I started, uh, doing. I got on some websites. I went to Miami, which really opened the door for me. I kept going to Miami for a vacation, but it was just like vacation. I, yeah. Vacation. <laughs> but that's what it was started as. Okay. And then I, then I started seeing like, wow, I could go on vacation and make money. Okay. I was very green, like square. So I was like, wow, I can go on vacation and start making money. You know, I'm over here. Next thing you know, I'm on a yacht. Next thing you know, I'm getting money, you know, whatever. And that was the beginning. 
So how did you navigate your ways to like the yachts? Did you like find a group of girls or you just saw you were on the beach with like your big booty and they're just like, hey, come on the like come on the yacht with me. Like is Miami I mean, in all different ways. But you're yeah, saying like if you're going there and you see that and then obviously there's a lot of people that are like, oh, well, let me give you whatever the fuck you want. Just, hey, you want to get on the boat? And I'm like, sure. Well, yeah, so you're going out there solo. No, I had a friend. And so we would do like regular stuff. We'd go to a dinner. Or we would go to a bar. A friend is girl or female? Or a girl. Male. Okay. And so we would just stand there or sit there. And then, you know, guys would come up and be like, hey, you want to go on the yacht tomorrow? Want to go to Mexico? Absolutely. Like, I'll give you this. I'll give you that. And I was just like, I need to take advantage of this. Okay. So that's where it all had started. Then at each step of the way, I started going, okay, so if I can do this, I can push it further. Um, cause there was a while that I was like going on dates with guys and I just, I couldn't do it. I could not get myself to the point to like follow through with the intimacy part of it. And then do I Do you was, like women? I do. I'm bisexual. Okay. okay. Have you ever had a relationship with a woman? No, but I want to. Okay. And like a lot of what you're saying is, it seems like, is it because of the male counterpoint and it not giving what for a relationship and you need to have a relationship with a female? Yeah. I, I had to come to that realization. Yeah. And it's been something that's like slowly... I have, I, I just, all I identify with men most of the time is like, I can have fun and be friends and sex. Yeah. And that's it. But with women, I find uh, I'm very comfortable, Much. emotional, intimate, and it's not really like oh, a huge fun. sex, sexual thing. Yeah. It's just more of like, I get everything that I need, I feel like, in yeah. a woman. Yeah. I would love to be a part of like a thruple or like to have a girlfriend and then we go and fuck eyes. I was like, I don't think that that would work for you because I feel like, I think the, again, the dick is like a... Not that a dildo wouldn't suffice, but it's like sometimes you need to like be fucked by a dick because you don't want anything attached to the dick. Yeah. So it's like transactional yeah. as far as like it's just yeah. whatever. So I feel like it would get in the way. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I think that that's it's healthy, though. I think that yeah. like trying different things, even like, you know, yeah. knowing and not staying in your marriage or whatever and being true to yourself and being like, this isn't for me and being honest about yourself and knowing what you need and what you want. I think that that's perfectly OK to do and navigate. And it's, there's no book on it there's no like whatever so yeah. it's like live your life girl so that got you got to you were in um texas then you went to miami you saw how the, that was working out mm -hmm. so then how did we get from there to being in porn so i had started only fans before covid because i think it was like 2018 um i thought about it for a year because i was worried oh my god what are people going to think about me you know, and I got kids and, you know, everything that everybody wants to say to you to make you feel like it's a bad idea. Or you're a bad person. So I was just like, I don't know. Can I take all that on? Uh, because it came from a very like I grew up in church and it was just like all the standards, you know, so that still kind of like sits in the back of your mind. Uh, so I thought about you still it. So have a good relationship with your family. Uh, my my mom and then my siblings. OK, and that's that's about it. OK. But it's always been that way. Yeah. It's not like, you know, oh my God. But you say growing up in the church, so sometimes it's like it go either way. Yeah. Well, it was my dad didn't go to church and my dad really wasn't in my life. Mm. Um, so it was just like my mom was always the, you know, like there. Yeah. I guess. Um, and then what was I going to say? I forgot. You're talking about how you wanted to do OF and you, the, your, oh, you yeah. about the porn and how you thought about people and what they were thinking about you and just because mm -hmm. of how your background and things like that, you know, from growing up. And then how did you, did you just, one day was like, fuck it, I'm just going to do porn mm -hmm. and just yeah. be. I kind of like talked to a few people about it, um, like different guys or, or like, you know, I didn't actually really talk too much to my family about it at the time because I was like, well, it don't matter. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You know, we all just kind of accept each other for who our crazy selves are. Um, and then because I had a photographer that was pushing me to do it. Um, so when you had just your OF, were you just doing, were you doing full nudity or so? Oh, yeah, stuff? everything. So you were already like the cusp of just, like doing stuff. You just didn't have the performers other than yourself. Exi well, I, I mean, eventually, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just me. Um, I, I do remember, actually, I did do a girl girl and the girl never gave me the content. I kind of got like, does that happen a lot? Or no. Okay. That was just like the beginning and I don't think I knew any better. Okay. And I, it was in Miami and the photographer that was telling me to do it, you know, uh, set me up with this girl because I was like, from the beginning, I was like, I'm all in. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no if ands or buts or little toes. No. Because if you're going to make fun of me or you're going to judge me, you're going to judge me all the way. 
and I'm going to go all the way and I'm going to do the best I can and make as much money as I can. Smart. She can't laugh at me at that point. You can, but I don't give a fuck at that point. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> go big or go home with my life. <laughs> Yeah. So from there, I was already doing like OnlyFans maybe two years. Uh, Brazzers hit me up on uh, my Twitter one day and was like, hey, would you do, would you shoot with us? And I was like, well, I mean, it's marketing. I'm not going to have to try too hard for yeah. it. Because I was self-marketing everything like, you know, on OnlyFans and, and on my social media, like hard, like too much, just way too much um and like obsessed with it so when that came about I just saw it as a marketing opportunity yeah. that I didn't have to work as hard for that was going to work for me and that's how that started and then so how is that like doing your first like mainstream porn were you excited were you nervous I was you nervous like, I was you... excited and nervous yeah yeah it was great I did my first uh it was a boy girl with Xander Cordovas I hope I said that right I'm horrible at names um, it was actually probably the best first experience you could get because he knows nice. what he's doing. He's a nice guy. He made me feel comfortable really quickly because yeah. I just, my head was just spinning because they didn't book me. Uh, I had lipo done, so they didn't book me like, th there were, it was like three months out. So I had three months to sit there and just, and I had no one to talk to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just imagine what this was going to be like. I didn't know anyone really in the industry at all. Um, nothing i didn't i didn't tell my family i did uh tell some siblings and that was about it mm -hmm. so did you have did you watch porn prior to like you thinking about doing it or was it always just transactional and was just thinking about like the next way to like level up always to, like, transactional you? yeah yeah i didn't watch it before because it doesn't it doesn't really do anything for me mm -hmm. i like i like to be in the moment and to be touched and to be doing things and yeah. that gets me excited like i want to do it and i think porn frustrates me Okay. Where it's like, I just want to do it. You just want to do it. You just want to fuck. Yeah. You just want to do it. You're like, just fuck. Yeah. I just want to fuck. <laughs> Who are some of the porn people that you kind of like look up to? Mm -hmm. Have anybody like helped you along the way? Or are you just kind of still navigating it by yourself? Have you worked with some people that's kind of helped you out? It's a lot of self navigating. Okay. I uh, don't have, uh, I mean, I probably did look up to some people. And then when I met them in person, it changed everything. Okay. You know, so they were rude, snuffed me, and that changed everything for me. Did it start, like, what happened? Like, it was just kind of brushed you off? Is there I'm not going to say any names, but uh, somebody very, very high up. Um, I met her in person, and I was so excited to meet her. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, and I was like, man, I'd love to work with you. And I just walked off right in front of my face. True. So I was like... Wow. Okay. Um, all right. That's cool. That sucks. I feel like, you know, and I, and I, sometimes I like, I empathize with both sides, right? I'm a, I'm a Gemini. I guess I would say like Dr. Texas, the whole thing, but it's like, what if that person was having a bad day? I get what if those things, whatever. And again, it's not that person thing. And then vice yeah, versa. What if you were, and you just true. were looking up to that for, you know, for and whatever. And I think that sometimes, especially in um, highly trafficked, areas where we're all in masses mm -hmm. that can become can become overwhelming because of like you like you said yourself it's like sometimes it's hard to have social anxiety and there's people coming at you from performers to directors to fans to you don't know to whatever so I think yeah. sometimes it's overwhelming and sometimes I feel like myself I've been in your shoes where I have taken things personal but then having conversations with those things that I thought whatever and they were unaware of um, mindfully so or not yeah I think that is a lot and having grace for just people in general yeah you know as much as like we go through hard things whatever it's like we all are we're just people and try to navigate one sex act at a time you know? yeah but yeah it's good for thought but yeah. I think that it's one of those things where it's like sometimes we forget those other sides too because it also feels like well fuck like you're not even gonna say hi to me like I'm doing things or like whatever and then you feel snubbed or you feel like well why wouldn't you like why am I not but I don't think sometimes it's always that case and sometimes it is. Sometimes the people are just assholes. Yeah. They can go both ways. But I think sometimes, like, um, I don't know. I feel like you just have to think about the other side. No, I totally understand that. And I've thought about that. <laughs> is there any kind of daily rituals that you do or kind of, like, kind of get you grounded to, like, this space of, like, being in, like, performer mode? Like, and how you kind of, like, get yourself to create your content? Um... 
trying to focus on my mental health and staying positive. Um, what do you do to One do that? Do you, are you talking to anybody? Do you meditate? Do you journal? Do you, is there like things like that? No, um, I've done a lot of therapy in my past, like in my regular life. Um, I did couples therapy. I did therapy on my own. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't feel like therapy really did much yeah. for me. Um, it depends on who you talk to. I feel like talking to people who have worked through situations and can empathize with you or give you advice, like, yeah. you know, like actual people has helped me out a lot, but I have been um taking medication that has been helping me um after avian last year i had gotten on prozac so last year was really hard for me um i got on prozac right after avian because i was like <laughs> 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 uh, my anxiety i just started having um have you always had anxiety issues yeah okay yeah it just threw me over the top okay because I, I, I feel like, because it's like one of those things too, it's like, well, because like AVN did it, but it was because of the pressures of being around that many people it was, at a time. It was. I'm not, and not knowing how to manage it. Exactly. I'm yeah. not saying like, oh my God, they did. No, but I'm just trying to give the effect of like what yeah. that means or like, was that a pattern before that you had yeah. in certain situations prior to like, and so it escalates at this age now because it's on a hundred times scale than it was yeah, cause, I'm sure. Yeah, because you're like more aware mm -hmm. and then you're more self like I'm so self-aware that then I can see a lot of this stuff happening. So I had gotten on Prozac and gained 30 pounds, which was very hard for me because this industry is based on like the way that you, you look and then being bigger or gaining weight isn't really fall under the, you know, the umbrella of what typically gets booked. So that was very hard on me. Um you know, I was already on the heavier side, quote unquote, and then I gained 30 pounds and it was just making my skin complexion, you know, off and, and everything. And so didn't feel like myself. I, I, uh, I was like, what's worse, the depression I'm having or feeling fat? Um, I didn't I still really haven't done my own photo shoot, like where I went to a photographer and made it a thing for it's been a year still. Yeah. Since then. Um, so. I got off of that several months um, ago, and then um, I a few months went by, and it was like we're coming up on ABN and all this stuff that has to happen, and I was like, I, I can't do it. I got to try something again. So then I switched to Cymbalta, and um, I've been losing the weight, so I've like lost six pounds, but, That's you know, good. it's better start than, somewhere. Yeah, it's, you know, we're getting there, but. I feel like you're really hard on yourself. You yeah, gotta, you gotta give yourself grace. Yeah, give yourself definitely. a hug. Give yourself. You know what I mean? I feel like sometimes it's like, I don't think it. It's like, um, it doesn't need to be that hard. Yeah. Just being you is enough. A hundred percent. I believe you yeah. know, and that's the thing is like, but now to getting it by yourself sucks sometimes. But again, like asking for help too is a big part of those things, and I think that is a struggle sometimes for a lot of people, and just feeling comfortable in settings to like kind of get that out because it's you know it's hard. Life's hard, you know, yeah. and then put on top of doing it, you know, be a sex worker and having an industry and then also then having anxiety and all those things like that. But I think it's manageable and you're doing a great job. And I think that, you know, just continue doing what you're doing and putting every day in front of itself and you're really fine. Yeah. Thank you. I feel like when you're, when you do a lot of things in life and you're alone a lot, like you're in your head and all you hear is that voice. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's where a lot of it comes from. You know, you're you're in the morning, like, okay, you got this. I'm going to bed. Okay, good night. Yeah. Like, it's just you. So then it's like all that negativity, almost like the volume just keeps getting turned up and it just gets to a point to where you're like, almost feel like it's like out of control or whatever. For sure. But I'm sure that it could be, you know, that's why I think that's really good that what you're doing as far as doing the stuff for yourself love and just, you know, you this journaling. If you don't have somebody who's like getting all those negative things out. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't stay in your head because, yeah. you know, it is, it's like, it's not always going to be that way, but there are people to talk to and there's people like outlets to speak to and when those things happen. But I think that figuring out what works for you, if it's a bath, if it's candles, if it's meditation, if it's talking to someone, a friend or going to dinner with someone is important to just get it out yeah. and not self-soothe yeah. all the time. What is some luxury item that you spoil yourself with? 
Is there anything that you do? You get like massages? <laughs> do you even spoil yourself? Okay, <laughs> food, food. Okay, you're a foodie. It's my highest expense. Okay, like, thousands of dollars. So are you like a Michelin starred like food girl? Or are you like Postmates? Whatever nice fine dining there is. Is it just any this food? Goes? This bitch likes to eat. It okay. doesn't even matter. Nothing it's wrong just- with that. I just like to eat. It could be a cheeseburger. It could be pizza. Uh, it could be, yeah, a Michelin five-star, you know, restaurant. Nice so once you're like, if you had your last meal, what would that be? <laughs> Mexican food. Mexican Tacos food? Okay. And rice. Okay, rice. we're having a Mexican buffet. Bring it on. Yes. <laughs> Margaritas and all. Let's do it. <laughs> what is the best pickup line ever used on you? Oh, I've heard too many. You've heard too many, but what's one that's actually worked on you? Has there been any? Or maybe some <laughs> clever ones that she like stuck with and been like, Hi, oh, hello. You know? How are you, ma'am? How are you doing today? That's it. That's all you got to do is just be a normal person. So that's what works for you. I was like, ma'am, is that not how, like, what's that? <laughs> I'm like, what, where are we? Oh, I feel like because I've heard so many weird oh. things that like when you act normal, it catches my attention. Oh, I see. I see the <laughs> trick here. I see where you're going with that. <laughs> So what is some weird ones, like you say? What are some ones that you, like, stick out in your mind, but not in a good way, but you're just like, are you, did you really just tell me that? Hey, Snowflake. Okay. Ms. I think some of the weirdest ones are, hey, Snowflake. <laughs> Do you respond? No. Just keep on walking. I just, yeah. Your booty brings a lot of attention, I'm sure. <laughs> I know I have one myself and yeah. <laughs> she's in trouble sometimes. So much trouble. Especially walking in Miami. I don't know how you were just oh, like were attacked or they didn't think you were doing a bang bro scene. Yeah. <laughs> or like bang bus nowadays. Like they do all this like, you know, stuff. Were you a part of any of those productions? Oh, no. No, so have you never worked for bang bros? Oh, bang bros. Yes, I'm sorry. I thought you said bang bus. Bang bus. Well, I didn't say that yeah. too, but I said that. No, it's just so, you know, uh, if you were walking in Miami and you're yeah. like a couple, you don't know what's going on there these days. It's either bang bros, a yeah. bang bus. Whenever I make my trip out there, I usually do like two or three with them, but. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a favorite company that you work for? Um, or have worked for? Hmm. I would have said, um, I would have said Brazzers before, like Mind Geek, but then lately I've been working a lot with Team Skeet. Okay. And I don't know, maybe it's different than... Um, skeet, Skeet. Skeet, Skeet. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they're pretty good experiences, you know? Okay. So, Like good performers or just like good overall, like... So like- when I, when I like, get, like when I judge the set, it's based on like... Um, you know, are there douches for people? Is there uh, the accommodations? Fund- yeah, the accommodations. Um, also, them providing the wardrobe is just please. You bitches are spoiled because of all this shit that I did please. not exist twenty years ago. I feel so bad. <laughs> if you didn't provide everything in your closet, they'd be like, "Just bring everything." What does that I even mean? mean? Like, <laughs> like, what does everything mean? I'm gonna bring. I my closet then, is a whole extra bedroom. It's, everything is a lot, but it stresses me out. Yeah, the, and you had to bring your own douches, and you had to like, if you were on set for thirteen hours, and Postmates was not a thing back then. No, no yeah, you were, I don't know how. I don't know how you did it. <laughs> you need a rich I'm so alive. I'm so alive. I'm so alive. So alive. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you but judge it off of all those things. So the catering yeah. parts of like <laughs> what, what a real company, especially nowadays, like so for sure, yeah. leaders should have because now it's just a different feel. And I feel like I mean I think that it should be protocol of just like standards. I mean I feel like, of a porn set. Yeah, I feel like it. I feel like it should be too. I feel like because we you know we already go through so much like mentally and physically. That I mean at least cater to us, especially when cater to my vagina. Please. Yeah, please cater to it. <laughs> Biggest pet peeve. Oh, on set? Yeah. Uh, when a lot of times when the guy just, like, keeps, like, trying to, like, be, uh, touch me and do extra, like, in between. Okay. Or, like, if you're not getting the vibe, like, please stop. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to make out with you all day. And- so you don't want to, like, do, like, a, a buffer situation before. Like, you just want, as soon as it says action that's yeah. the only time you want to be touched by this well performer? it depends on the chemistry okay. sometimes like with that i've like oh he's hot or i like him yeah but if i'm not really feeling like i want i want my consent so I'm, like reading reading the room and yeah the situation. Okay. yeah so it's like i got you and if got i you. say no then i say no or i'm giving you like the you know pick up on it okay <laughs> get that show me itch. best gift that you've ever received oh wow 
Good. Is there anything that sticks out in your mind that somebody gifted you? Uh, hmm. An experience, a gift, uh, anything. Probably money. Money? Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm. Do you masturbate more than you have sex? Yes. How many times a week do you masturbate? It depends on the week. Ooh. If I'm out of what town. About this week? This week. <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot. You're masturbating um, a lot. And yeah. this is not for content. This is just for pure pleasure for yourself. Yeah. Okay. Does that help your anxiety? Probably. I don't know. I was thinking about that. I saw this meme that was like, <laughs> do you do it because you're depressed or you want the dopamines? And I was like, oh, my God. That's what it comes from. I'm Dr. Texas. See? Yeah. See? Yep. And there you go. Helping you out here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Have you ever tasted, I already know the answer to this, your own tongue? Well, yeah. Describe what it tastes like. Uh, depends on the week. <laughs> depends on the week. It depends on the part of the cycle you're in. Not really like much. I I, I don't really need a two mile and horn or anything, but I don't have like a just like a very pungent smell or okay. or taste. So it just tastes like nothing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> have you ever injured yourself during sex? Yeah. How like myself or somebody did it? <laughs> what happened to you? Because it was too big, or because of something else happened? Probably, yeah, bottom out, man. Like, <laughs> Can you describe the private talk what bottom out means? <laughs> you know when the car hits the ground and it bottoms out? I fucked up my first car like that. I definitely <laughs> know. I'm it's just big and it just fucking rams into your, your uterus. Pay attention. Yeah, or like the back, like, I think because like, well, I mean, you would know. You know, your butt's so big. That's when you're, related. I when was you're like, doing doggy and they're like... Like, please do not come too far this way because there's not much room for you to to maneuver around. So it would rip, like, the, the bottom of my vagina down there. And I remember when I first started not fun. escorting, like, heavy, it was like that, that would get ripped down there. And I'm like, how big is your booty? Can we see? Uh, it's Can you stand up? 53. 53? Jesus, mine's only 46. I feel like mine is so small. I swear, I measure it. I swear, there's no way. Think what? 53. Yeah, mine looks small compared to yours. That's <laughs> so hilarious. I've had that though. Yeah, I've never been in the 50s. I'm always in the uh, high 40s. High well, and I was in the 40s, and then I gained that. uh Hey, it looks 30. good on you. It looks good on you. It looks good on you. I've always, always gained all like my weight, like right here, like the saddlebags, as Just, they call them. Yes, that's what my mom said. Yes, saddlebags. That's what they call Thunder them. Thunder thighs. Yeah, the southern ladies. We yes. saw that. Yes. What are your thoughts on virtual sex? Like virtual reality sex. Like there's all these new like technologies now where it's like they're wearing these like ocular things where you're like seeing like this whole like thing. They're having AI leaks now of even like taylor swift to the I that was podcaster funny. that i don't even know what her name is bobby something i don't know some talk i don't know what her name is but something that she just asks weird questions that's awkward yeah. around the time yeah. but it's just like this new wave of people doing like what are your thoughts on that mm. be a content creator like are you afraid that people are going to do ai things of yourself and sell it sell it or how do you feel about them doing that kind of technology well, I mean, I've kind of thought about that, but then at the end of the day, it's like, well, I mean, how can you control, you know, so much of that? Um, I guess more of my thoughts are trying to process, you know, why people would want to do that. But I do get that there are some guys that, you know, maybe they're too intimidated. Well, they're stealing porn nowadays, so why don't they're going to try to steal yeah. anything? That's the problem with technology. As great as it, as it is for certain things, yeah. it's also not for other things because it's like it's so kind of run real like and then that's why when these cases with these celebrities that are having it done to them people are believing that it's really them is because a horny guy out there just thinks like it's sit hot if you squint your eyes it may look like them but and it just works that so it's like funny. people like us that we're doing like our own stuff where if we're already doing that now you're duplicating something that we're already doing so how do you tell a fake from like, it's like yeah. a deep fake to whatever it's you know it's an interesting field and you know wave of technology that's coming into to play now i think it's a big problem 
I do. I think it's a big problem. I'm kind of hoping that by the time it's a massive problem, I have already transitioned into something different. Do you have an exit strategy of your transition? What is what is that? Yeah, I'm actually really proud of myself. Okay. Um, last year, instead of um, overly investing into my business, I finally bought a house cash. Okay. Um, and I'm remodeling it right now. So I feel like I'm, I've always wanted to do real estate. Um, and so I just want to keep buying houses and doing Airbnbs or, uh, you know, maybe renting them out. But I also just want to go stay in them whenever I feel like. Okay. But yeah. Congrats. That's a big deal. Thanks. Describe something exciting in your life right now. Hmm. Exciting. Well, um, I've just been focusing on going to the gym again. Okay. Um, that's about so your health you know, and fitness, trying to socialize more. Um, and I've been working on just, you know, connecting, like, you know, keeping relationships with people and stuff, but I don't have anything. I'm always working. Okay. <laughs> what are the top three rules that you you live by? Do you have like a code that you kind of live by or anything like kind of your standards of rules? Don't waste my time and don't waste my money and don't fuck with my kids. <laughs> Word. You heard, Jenna. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever gone through a partner's phone? Uh, okay, partner. So both of my marriages, I never went through their phones. Um, I started, like, when I was, like, kind of, like, you know, dating originally, like, in Texas. I started going through guys' phones and they're on the date. Okay. It's a little bold. I did it a couple of times, but what did you find? That I was right. They okay. had a girlfriend they were lying about that was actually in the apartment upstairs while we we're at dinner, which was weird. But intuition. Um, yeah. I had to prove my intuition. So that's <laughs> the only reason why I went through their their phones. their phones. Yeah. Have you ever taken a souvenir home from having sex with somebody? One night stand or someone that you're having sex with? Oh, probably like a clothing item. Or if they leave them at my house. You pull like, at them? It's like a lost and found? Like it's that hose thing. Oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, what are you looking for in a partner in dating? Um, I would really Or like, are you even looking honestly, for a partner? I am. I'm on, I, well, I got kicked off of Bumble. Why'd you get kicked off a of bone? I don't know. I think it's there. You they get just kicked out of a lot of things. Lately. I know. I'm Trust starting me. to I see got, a pattern I know. over here. What I is know. going on? Definitely. Jenna? I've analyzed myself and I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> uh, Dr. Texas needs to know. What the fuck is that? I got kicked out of church too. <laughs> the youth group. No. Um, so it usually involves my attitude. No. Uh, no, actually, I think that they just know. Okay. That I do porn. And but how do they just know? Because I was on Bumble. What pictures are you using? Regular pictures. I try to, okay, I try to there's mimic. No, there's no OF pic? No. I try to mimic like regular person, right? I try to use very, no makeup. You very... are a regular person, you know, that, by the way, right? <laughs> no, you know, you're a human being. <laughs> I, but I try not to use pictures that you'd be like. Oh, that's an Instagram photo or, you know, like something that looks extra, okay. you know? So no filters. I try to just... No, no fake eyelashes. No, you're just like... Yeah. I, just... I had a friend that said that you have to do like, like, like side profile type pics. So you're not like full on. I look at your profiling oh. pics. So you're not they like... They already know who I am, no? Well, it's me... Too late. Well, for the other ones. There's more yeah. ones than Bumble. Well, I did. Well, I got on one for like... um like bisexual and lesbians, but I haven't, nothing cool has happened yet. Okay. But what I think happened was because I've been on Bumble since the beginning, the beginning when they first really started it. So it was never a problem before, but yeah. then, and I wasn't even using it when they initially shut my account down. So I know I didn't do anything. Okay. Um, and we're then, targeted. I guess, or they just somehow, maybe their AI went through and caught like, maybe, maybe or somebody maybe. reported something. Something. Knows? Somebody routed you out. Something you don't like happened. it. Don't like it at all. What we do like is that we're going to play Truth With Texas. This okay. is my favorite part. This is a little bit more kinky questions, a little bit more naughty, a little bit more spicy. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you having fun? That's important. Yes. Okay, good. Are you, like, not nervous anymore? Yeah. Because this is the not nervous Texas section. Texas always this a break is... through the... We broke, we broke the ice. Yeah. We're swimming in the ice. <laughs> we're good. Okay, spicy questions. 
Craziest place you've had sex? Uh, on top of, there was these pillars in this uh, apartment complex I lived in. It was on top of the parking garage. Oh, just uh, out there in the wild exhibition style. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, me and this guy that would do content. I'd probably say that was, like, the craziest because we could have fallen off the, you know, we were on top of the the parking garage pillars. You yeah, just wanted the dick climb. that bad? Or who was like, who was like, hey, let's climb up there? Me. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm a curious. I, you know what, Jeff? <laughs> this, is, this is the problem. Now you know why. <laughs> Toys in the bedroom. Uh, not really. No? Yeah. Okay. No. Have you ever broken up with somebody because they were bad in bed? Absolutely. Absolutely. One and done? Or did you give them at least another try? I've definitely given people tries. And then there's times where I was like, no, one done. We're not, we're not doing that again, you know? Celebrity hall pass. Do you have one? Wait, what does that mean? Or do you have a celebrity you want to fuck? Because you're not in a relationship. Oh. So it wouldn't be a hall pass, really. So is there someone that you would want to slide into a DM? Maybe a celebrity yeah. like dream fantasy that you've like wanted to fuck for like ever? Or you just want to fuck now? God, it's so hard. Or a female. Whatever. I mean, in the past, I probably would have been like, yeah, you know. But then after meeting celebrities and then realizing, like, you can meet them and then they're completely different. It's kind of hard. But I will say I would love to meet Johnny Depp. Okay. Love him. Okay. So you want to have sex with Johnny Depp? I would. Yeah, I would try. You would try. <laughs> what do you mean try? You're either doing it or you're not. <laughs> You're either sucking the dick or you're <laughs> bending over if or you're just you're like, help me, John. We the chemistry was Jen. So what the <laughs> Does he have to like recite a line of the Pirates of the Caribbean to make the chemistry right? Or what would it mean? What? Yeah. The knife opens your whole outfit on. <laughs> you know, what's with girls liking his whole outfit? Someone the other day said they wanted him just in that specific outfit. The Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't know, Johnny. I don't know. Oh, okay. Have you ever had someone fall asleep during sex? I think this is a yes. <laughs> no. No. I have. Oh, you fallen asleep? <laughs> Did you get woken up by the dick? Uh, yeah, that's happened a lot. Were they, how do you know? <laughs> are you just a narcolept? What is, are you sleeping? <laughs> what are you falling well, asleep no, a lot? I'm just tired and then they're still trying to fuck and I'm just tired. <laughs> so you're snoring and they're just all about it. Yeah. It's, that's, it's and that, sometimes I, think, I would be like, I kind of like to fuck with them and pretend like I was like actually. But you have like one eye open, but you're like sleep yeah. creeping. That yeah. is a thing, a fetish. I know. Creep. And you know what's crazy is that now they do this. Or did, did you start this trend? <laughs> the this, baby. This, this is what's going on. I had to go and do, what is it, free something? Um, or now you just don't do there? anything free, honey. I don't know. But you just sit there and you're just having sex, like someone's having sex with me, but we're talking like nothing's happening. I don't know. That's something. It was so easy. I loved it. It was what's going on with these kids. What is this new thing? Oh, I thought it was weird too. Interesting. Kinky questions. Most number of times during a day you've had sex. So what's your like highest number? Of men? Um, well. Times and then men. Uh, nine separately. Okay. Nine different times or nine different, different men. men. Different and men. one day. Yes. All right. Yeah. Kind of, it was money. Make my money. Said I just wanted. <laughs> well, they, oh, and there were different times too. It was a busy day. It was a busy day. I thank God I don't have to do that. <laughs> Shower sex or car sex? Shower. Do you have any fetishes? Um, I don't know. I know this sounds stupid. I'm supposed to have some crazy, like... Why does it sound you know? stupid if it's not? I'm supposed to have some, like... Oh, my God, I just... All... I no, it can be as dumb as, like, I like feet or I don't have any. It's not... No one needs you to do any of that. No, I, I feel like I appreciate the body and, like, symmetry. Uh, so I don't have, so you're, like... like, a more voyeuristic kind of person? Like, you like the imagery of it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sex skill that you're most proud of? Um... Uh, I mean, it'd probably be riding dick. Riding? I mean, are you a cowgirl, side saddle? Or are you like reverse kind of cowgirl? That but... depends on the dick, baby. <laughs> okay, so what is the right dick for you to do? Which one you like? Long. <laughs> long. I mean, I like a thick dick. Okay. It doesn't have to be like for my pleasure. Who's your favorite work? performer to work with? Uh, I would say it was Xander. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, I, I haven't fucked his. I tried it in my catalog of dicks. I fucked him a long time ago, but I don't <laughs> catalog remember. Catalog of dicks. <laughs> 
I was like, I don't remember what it looks like, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't remember. Yeah. Okay, so that's your perfect size dick. So yeah. what is your favorite doggy style? I mean, cowgirl style. My bad. I was like, wait, how many ways we do it? Because the cowgirl, it okay, could do front. reverse or you could do side saddle. So like big booties, I think like why it's like for me the most fun because that's where they could see your ass the most. So mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, I like to do a little side saddle, you know, most of the time because most people don't know what that's about. Like one leg in, one leg out, you know, and mm-hmm. it's fun right. for you. Regular. Just regular. Yeah. Mm, spice it up, girl. Yeah. Well, get it. Get it. <laughs> well, sometimes it's just hard because. Throw I, that ass in a circle. So it's, if it's not long enough, then I can't really do that many positions. Find the long one. Yeah. You can do it. I have faith in you. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever called someone the wrong name? Absolutely. <laughs> you said it with such confidence. I love it. That's why my name is my name, because I knew that I would not remember my own name if I changed my name. Okay. It's Jenna. So that's her real name. Yeah. And your fate and your stage name. Yes. Smart. Interesting. I know someone like that. Um, <laughs> let's see. Naughty questions. Choked or spanked? Ooh. Depends on what guy. One or the other. You can only can pick one. Uh, maybe choked. Okay. Lube or spit? Ooh, lube. Spit or swallow? Spit. Disappointing. Yeah. Baked an orgasm? All the time. Can I hear what it is? Sounds like? Oh, God. Why do I feel like I don't do this all the time? (laughs) I'm just one of your (laughs) OF subscribers. I just said, hey, Jenna Star, I would love a J-O-R. You like "Mm, like that? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's you laugh bit. too. Yeah, I like it. I like that for you. Mile High Club, <laughs> fucked in an airplane, in the sky or on the in the sky. <laughs> no grounded planes can be fucked. <laughs> no. no, I don't think so. Okay. Hmm. Hooked up with a friend's sibling. A friend's sibling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> How do you think so? You either know or you don't. Or a brother's brother. A brother's brother? Like two, a brother. Wait, a brother and then his brother. <laughs> I was six. <laughs> Were they twins? No. It's shame. No. All right, last question. Biggest turn off? Hygiene. Hygiene, bad yeah. hygiene, and it's yeah. just not for you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I like that. That's the rest of Truth with Texas. Is there anything you want to ask Miss Texas? Now that you're all warmed up, you feel settled in. Like I said, you know, we we're talking like we're like we're good friends now. Um, I feel like I had a million questions, and then now you don't remember any of them. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't think about. It. I was going to be asking you questions. Can you think of one? No, nothing. How many years have you been doing it? Ooh. Long time, it's a very long time. You know, it's all right. <laughs> it's like, why do I feel like a dagger just went to my heart? No, I'm just kidding. Aww. No shame. <laughs> We're like the, around the same age. No, I've been in the business for 20 years. Yes, just about. I'm shy a little of it, but um, wow. I started in 2000. The first thing I ever did was 2006. Um, and like then, 2007 was my first like mainstream porn. The first one was like reality porn, which is. What is that? Exactly. Let's see how it is. <laughs> so what is that? There used to be, um, so when back, so when DVDs were a thing, uh, it was like a line called College Amateur Tour. So they were trying to get girls that had never done scenes before ever. So I was a prodigy of that movie. I was a, going to college in Texas and I did a scene and huh. decided to come to LA and do it. Well, actually, first I went to Miami and I did a scene for Bang Bros and then I moved to LA a week later. Wow. And so I've, I've LA. been in LA ever since. Yeah. Wow. So, um, yeah. Fun times. So we have been a lot of fun. About 18? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely um, a lot of growth, a lot of things. I don't regret anything. I think for me, it's one of those things that you live and you learn. I always say like I do things twice, sometimes three times just to make sure I don't like it. Um, But it's been a journey and it's definitely been great to me. I love the industry. I've definitely had a great time. 
um, seen goods, bads, you know, and all in the in-between. But um, yeah. I think that you make it what you want to. And, you know, don't be so hard on yourself or thinking you have to fit into some kind of bubble because you don't. You can make your own lane and you're beautiful just the way you are in that. And that's all that matters. For sure. So please let us know where we can support you, follow you, and uh, yeah, do um, things for Jenna Star. My Instagram, hopefully it stays that way, is um, ms Jenna Star, and then I have finally www.jennathestar.com. Okay, girl. <laughs> All right, thank you again for coming on a private talk and getting to know you a little bit more. I enjoyed my time with you and private talk until we meet again. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Bet Online.